Alright guys, I'm back with my WWE Raw review for the uh, 19th of the 12th, 2016 guys. And I've got to say, this was, this had to be a good show for the WWE. Like, after last night, after last night's terrible show at Roadblock, they really had to deliver the WWE with Monday Night Raw. And I feel like they did. And I thought it was enjoyable, I really liked the show. And in my opinion, I wasn't sat there bored. Yes, that is right. Um, just that amazes me. Like I was so fucking bored. I, I, you know, at roadblock end of the line. Yeah, cheap plug right there. Um, but yeah, like it was just so bad. But yeah, before we start this video, guys, remember to hit the notification button every time I upload because that would really just help me out, guys. And like this, share this, and subscribe if you haven't already. Anyway, got all that shit out of the way. Let's go on to raw. So Raw opens up this week with KO and Jericho coming out and basically they talk about how it was a plan, how they was not getting along for weeks and then at Roadblock the plan fruition did and um, it worked. And then basically they talk about how they're pissed off with Foley that they like Reigns and Rollins basically destroy uh, uh, Powerbomb both of them uh, at Roadblock. Then Mick Foley comes out and says that at the Royal Rumble it's going to be KO defending his US title against Roman Reigns. And I'm like, are you serious, man? Why Roman Reigns? Like, what? Is this going to really sell tickets to the Royal Rumble? Like, it's bad enough that the WWE's attendance for Roadblock, a minor pay per view for their, you know, for, you know, minor pay per view for December, is not getting any ticket sales. But you, you, and then you say that basically, instead of having what the fans want in a Kevin Owens and a Chris Jericho feud for Royal Rumble, you go, you say fuck you to the fans, and you basically say, you, you basically say, well, fuck these fans. I mean, these are the fans that really pay the money, that go to our shows and fucking buy our merch. But we're not gonna cater to the fans. We're not gonna cater to our audience. Like what? company doesn't cater to their audience if the audience are not getting what they want they'll just leave then that's it and that is down to Vincent Man and Kevin Dunn it's just them because they run the shit they know I'm raw you know they run raw and stuff like that and you know Vince has a little input in Smackdown but it's mostly Triple H on there so stuff like that but Whatever, and basically, uh, Vince McMahon was like, F you to the fans, Roman Reigns isn't getting over, so what we're going to do is basically, we're going to th shove it down your throats, and basically, you're going to fucking put it over it, so it's going to be, you're not going to get, what, you're not going to get the match where you were teasing a couple weeks ago, you're going to get Reigns and KO again, for the 100th time, I didn't care about it, and then, um, the stick question was that, Jericho's going to be in the shark cage, if he doesn't go in the shark cage, then he's not allowed to compete in the WWE ring again, um, I thought that was a pretty good stick, I like the segment, um, then we get to the, um, and then we have a cruiserweight match, it was Cedric Alexandra versus Norm Dar, um, uh, Cedric goes over, it looks like they're building up a little feud there between those two guys, um, then we get to, um, and, no, it's over. Then we get to Enzo More, um, not Enzo, we get to Big Kaz versus Rusev, um, ended in a DQ, um, it was kind of like a rematch from Payback, I didn't care about it, um, not Payback, I'm Roblox, what the fuck am I talking about, um, and then we got to, um, and then we had a segment between uh, Cesaro and Sheamus, and they're basically getting new Raw tag, uh, tag titles, they finally got rid of the quarter coin whatever tag belts they were they finally retired those belts and get them raw belts it was, a, it was a matter of time where it was gonna eventually change the belts so they're basically still the same belt but they're silver and they've, they've got red straps on them for raw so that's it and then um you had Sasha Betts got a good promo saying that her feud with Charlotte's gonna go down in history then Nia Jax comes out not much reaction for Nia Jax. I feel kind of sad that the WWE have not really put much, much focus in a Nia Jax character. Like, she was good on NXT. She was dominant. Like, when she debuted it on the main roster after the draft. And then, since this Sasha and Charlotte feud has really elevated the women's division, it's, it's like the rest of the women cannot get over. They struggle to get over. Look at Bailey. I mean, she got a good couple pops on Raw, but she isn't getting over. 
and Nia Jax isn't getting over. You know why, WWE? Because your your solar system for many months was Charlotte and fucking Sasha Banks, and I don't mind that. But when you don't put much focus on your other women wrestlers, how the hell are, are we, the fans at home and in the live in the live events and stuff like that, and at your raw and that raw and pay per views? to get invested into these women if they're not got the proper characters and the proper storylines to really get me invested in these other women like in my opinion Sasha and Charlotte on a, are on a different level like their matches and their feuds are just up here and the rest of the women are like here but on Smackdown you have all the women on the same level who are like legit challenges for lots of books for the title but on Raw it's like you're like they're up there and the Raw women are like down here. The rest of the raw women are down here and Sasha and Charlotte are like way up top. And that is not fair because you've got good women wrestlers like Bailey in there and you're the Nia Jax and you're not using these women properly. They're not over properly. And that is to do with basically booking and not featuring them properly and not trying to get these over. These I mean Bailey was fucking over as hell on NXT. So why the hell does she fail on the main roster? And they're gonna say Oh, well, you know, it's a bigger audience. Who the fuck cares? Because in my opinion, she's over anyway. Over in NXT, so why can she not get over it in a, on the main roster? You know why? Because fucking booking sucks in, on the main roster for Raw. It does. I feel sorry for people who are going to go on Raw from NXT. I mean, I just feel sorry for those guys. I hope Samoa Joe is not going to Raw because the same thing is going to happen to him. Nakamura... Fucking revival. Just if those guys go to Raw in January, I'm just gonna just really get pissed off because I know they're gonna get lost in the shuffle. Well, especially with Samoa Joe is in revival. I, I mean, look what happened to Anderson and Gallows, man. Anyway, um, and then we got Bailey and Charlotte having a promo, and then it led to a match. It looks like Bailey and Charlotte for the Royal Rumble there. We kind of saw this coming from Survivor Series anyway. Um, but yeah, Bailey got a good reaction actually going to this last episode of Raw. Um, Bailey wins by roll up. Uh, you know, it was, an, it was a short match. Then we get a, another cruiserweight match. Well, not, not a cruiserweight match. We get a cruiserweight segment, sorry. Neville comes out and basically talks about how the fans never really respected him. All they cared about is when, he, when they felt sorry for him. And basically when he was basically doing nothing. And then he said he's tired of catering to the fans and he's out for himself. And... He basically gonna dominate the cruiserweight division, and the one thing I do like about um, the cruiserweight d division, I know that they've been buried. I'm glad that they're giving them promo times. Like we had two promos tonight from like the two heels on uh, the two heel cruiserweights, and I really like that. And then Brian Kendrick comes out and attacks T.J. Perkins and uh, Rich Swan, and and it looks like to me at the Royal Rumble they're gonna have a fatal four way. For the cruise title between Brian Kendrick Neville and TJ Perkins and Rich Swan. Um, it's that's how it seems. Like. And I do like how they've put Austin Aries on the commentary team for Raw, uh, for the cruiseweights to get the cruiseweights over because they need somebody from the cruiserweight division. I know they had Corey Graves out there, but he, you know, they need somebody else as well, like to elevate them as well, which is real and really cool. And if they can, t uh, um, I am glad that. You know, I get a break from Byron Saxton. Anytime it's a pretty sweet match and I see Austin Aries on my TV screen, I'm like, thank you. Thank you. Um, but anyway, um, and then we get a tag match. And it's like, so we have a tag match between the New Day, Sheamus, versus the Shining Wizards. Yes, I call them the Shining Wizards because that's it. And basically the club. And um, basically, it was a... You know what? It was a good match, I guess. You know, it was an actual good match, this one. It, it wasn't a bad match. Um, the Bay Faces go over, and then after that, basically, they celebrate, and that was it, really. It looks like, to me, that we're going to see Sheamus and Cesaro versus the New Date Royal Rumble again. Maybe you're going to throw in a club there for a heel tag team, I don't know. Maybe like a triple threat match. I'd like to probably see that. Or, if you want to put Enzo and Kaz in there for a Fatal 4, then I'll be happy there. Or, if you just want to put... Um, James Cesaro, Enzo, and Kaz versus the New Day because I think New Day are going to break up after the Royal Rumble anyway, and then they're going to have their triple threat match going into WrestleMania. So after that, we had um, the main event, and it was uh, Reigns and Rollins versus Jericho and um, KO, and it was a good match. 
um, basically ends by DQ because Brown Strowman came out and he was all through the night destroying like everybody in sight. He was destroying like people backstage. He says that if Sami Zayn, if he doesn't get a sound of Sami Zayn tonight, then he's just going to kill them anyway. He's going to like fucking kill these, like everybody uh, in the WWE. Like, he, like I fucking loved how Braun Strowman was blocked. He was like, finally, the WWE finally doing, finally, they're building up a new star in a Braun Strowman finally. And I'm glad that they're giving him such a big push, but they're not like, Shoving him down our throats, like they're, they're protecting Braun Strowman very well, and I really like that. Um, and then basically, he attacked Reigns and Rollins, and then that's how the show ended, really. And that was awesome. Having Braun Strowman end the last episode of Raw was pretty damn cool, man. I, I just see big things for Braun Strowman in 2017, guys. Um, I'm sorry, guys, that this Raw reviews are uh, pretty damn long, but I just wanted to talk about quite a lot of things on Raw, so yeah. That was my WWE Raw review, guys, for the 19th of the 12th, 2016, guys. What did you guys think of this last episode of Raw? Leave your thoughts in the comments. Remember to hit the notification button every time I upload. Like, share, and subscribe, and check you later.